Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Virginia and today I am back with another Halloween DIY video. I showed you 13 last week, but I still had some ideas in my head and I wanted to get them done this season. So today I'm bringing you eight more Halloween DIYs. The difference between this video and last week's is that these are so quick and easy. I think each DIY is less than a minute or two in this video. So they're really easy ones for any last minute Halloween DIYs that you want to get done. I know that sounds crazy to say last minute Halloween when it's not even October yet, but maybe you're watching this video later. For this Raven apothecary piece, I took a candlestick and one of the gold wire wreath forms from Dollar Tree and painted them both black. This one's a little harder to see, but I'm taking Spanish moss, which can be found in the gardening section of the Dollar Tree, and placing that where the candlestick and my wreath hoop meat. Um, that is going to be our bird's nest. I think it's a crow, but I'm going with Raven in my mind. I found these, they were two clip on birds on a pack on one of the Dollar Tree end caps. And I placed him right in the center. I was about to say this is another quick and easy DIY, but I'm going to have to say that for every single DIY. So I need to come up with some different adjectives here, but this was a simple one. It looks a little complex with the spider's web, but it's actually not. I took one of the vases from Dollar Tree and painted that black. I didn't make it opaque or anything. I just wanted to get one layer down. So it was a little bit easier when I went in with my hot glue. Next, I grabbed my chalk pen and I'm just drawing out what I want my spider web to be, kind of doing like all the different lines, almost looks like glasses cracked. And then you go in, put a circle on the inside and just start connecting your web. So I went around doing this. You don't need a chalk pen. You could use a pencil marker, really whatever you want, because we're going to end up covering this with black paint. So you won't be able to see any of this writing anyway. Similar to how I did the candy apples in, I said candy apples, they definitely were not, they were poison apples, don't listen to me, they were not <laughs> candy apples, my poison apples in my latest Halloween video, I'll link that above if you want to check it out. I'm just going over everything that I have drawn out with the chalk over with hot glue and waiting until that is completely dry. Then once I made sure it was all dry, I went over it again with black paint. I like to add a little bit of Mod Podge to my black paint whenever I'm working with a glass surface. Sometimes it's hard for paint to go on glass, so just adding that Mod Podge really makes it stick and just adhere to everything a little bit better. To make the spider web stand out from the black background, I went in with this gray color. It's called Elephant by Waverly. It's one of my favorite dark grays. And I went in with a dry brush, just added a tiny bit. See, I got a little bit too much on there. And it just went over the spider web that kind of cast it a little bit more of a highlighted look to our vase. You could always fill this with flowers. If I had some black roses, that would have been perfect, but I didn't. So I just put a candle down and there and lit that. For a lot of my Halloween backdrops this year, I've been using books. I always like the feel of a gothic apothecary or a haunted library, even the Forbidden Library from like Beauty and the Beast. I just think that books can have a little bit of a spooky element to them too. So I really like using them a lot in my Halloween decor. So for this one, I wanted to have an accessory to go on top of the book. So I'm making these book beads. I took one of the witch's hats from Dollar Tree and painted it black and then added a saying trick or treat. I'll have this link down below if you use Cricut. It is an SVG file, so if you want to use it, it'll be down below. Then for our beads, I already had these, so I took them apart and the darker brown beads I put in a Ziploc bag with some black paint and just shook those up and waited for them to dry. And then for the natural wooden beads, I put a little bit of white paint in there and also shook that up and waited for it to dry. I did not catch this on camera. I was so mad at myself, but all I really did was string the black and white beads back on to our yarn. And I thought that my end was a little bit too puffy. So I decided to make another one. And this time I made sure to hit record. I like to use an index card or a flash card and wrap the yarn around that a bunch of times. This time I made sure to not do it quite as thick as I did previously. Then once you slide that off of the card, I took another piece of yarn and just tied around the top section, 
making sure that I had enough room to thread my yarn through. Then you just cut the parts down below to whatever length that you like. This was making me much happier. It wasn't quite as poofy. So I pulled off the other one cause yeah, I didn't like it. And I threaded this one through. I took the yarn at the end and just threaded it through the top and tied that into a knot. I love adding these to a top of a book stack. They're really fun and you can do them for so many seasons. You just have to change out the wood ornament and the colors to fit whatever occasion it is. So this is always a go-to DIY for me. If you watched last week's video, then you will know that I made this really spooky skull head and hands that looks like it's coming out of a mirror or a picture frame. So this is kind of the smaller scale, a little bit friendlier version of that DIY. I'll place a picture of it up here. So for this one, you're gonna need a clay pot. I got mine, I think in a two pack from Dollar Tree and I painted it black before placing a little bit of a floral foam. Then I took a skeleton hand and I painted it in a gold metallic color and hot glued it to a bamboo skewer. So then I was able to stick it down in that floral foam and position it how I want it in my clay pot. I want it to look like it's coming up out of the grave. So I placed that a little bit more towards the front and I forgot to hot glue the floral foam down. So I did that. For the tombstone, I really like these metal tags from the Dollar Tree. This one that has the rounded top just looks so much like a tombstone to me, so it was a no-brainer. But to cover where the hole is at the top where you would thread some jute through, I took a rub-on transfer from, of course, the Dollar Tree. This one had a ghost on it, and I just transferred that down onto our faux tombstone. The last step in this DIY is adding some hot glue and Spanish moss all around the tombstone tag and our zombie hand that's coming up out of the earth. I chose to go with this brown Spanish moss so it looked like the dirt was kind of old and dried for the season, but you could also do it a fun green color. Dollar Tree has tons of different moss. They have the green, the reindeer moss, the Spanish moss. So yeah, you can use whichever one you think fits best. Okay, I might have spared you from saying quick and easy too much, but I will say that this was the easiest DIY in the entire video, but I think it's so cute and something that you can add to your regular home decor for the Halloween season. I have candlesticks up year round on my fireplace, but for Halloween, I thought it'd be really fun to add little ghost faces onto them. It's a very subtle touch. If you're really not into the Halloween decor, I think this is a cute way to incorporate just a tiny bit of it. Someone might not even notice it at first glance, and then maybe when they're looking a little bit harder, they'll realize, oh, those candles have little ghost faces. I just use black paint. I don't light my candles, or if I do, it's only for a picture, a very short amount of time. These are really just for decor. So if this did drop down, it would probably ruin the ghost faces. But again, I'm just using this for decor. So just using some plain black paint works for me. Next up is probably my favorite DIY in the whole bunch. I've had this idea for a few months now and finally acted upon it. I have a couple of the wood bird houses in my craft stash and I've used them for pretty DIYs like a birdhouse in the spring, but I thought how cool would it be if we turned it into more of a haunted house? So first step was painting the entire birdhouse black, and then I wanted to add a bat coming out of the top of the birdhouse, so I grabbed some silver just wire that I had, and I bent that in just kind of a twisted formation, and then I'm gonna be adding the bat on in just a little bit once that glue is dry. I wanted a pumpkin for the front of our haunted house. I thought one of the wood apples that I painted orange would work, but it was a little bit too big. So I just popped off one of the styrofoam pumpkins that came in these fall harvest trucks. For the bat, I took a bat ring that came in a huge pack from the Dollar Tree and just cut the bat off of the ring section and hot glued that on to the top of our metal wire. Using one of my paint pens, I wrote out beware. Usually I would use my Cricut, you know, a nice cutting machine to have pretty lettering, but for a haunted house, I figured it would not be very nice handwriting, so I could go ahead and do it. On one of the sides of the house, I thought it was looking a little empty, so it had to be a haunted house, so I went back to those rub-on transfers and took a larger ghost and placed that on the side of our haunted house. 
I really wanted a ghost to be popping out of one of the birdhouse windows, but all of the wood ghosts that I had were too big. I tried to do um, a skull ring and that didn't really work. So I figured I would go with a shuttered up house. So to make those planks or boards, you know, for the shutters. I just took one of the bamboo skewers that are in the kitchen section of Dollar Tree and I just cut them into small pieces and then hot glued those across the openings of our birdhouse. You can't see it too well here, but I went in with some Spanish moss and just placed that around the front and kind of crawling up the sides of our haunted house. Of course, wanted it to look very overgrown, like no one's been there in a while and you know, the weeds and everything are growing around there. So I just used some hot glue to keep all of that in place. Back to our shutters. Now that the hot glue was all dried, I went in with a dark brown paint, my favorite one, Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel, and painted over the natural bamboo wood shutters. Last step, I did take a little bit of that gray elephant paint by Waverly and just distress the whole haunted house to make it look even older and this is how everything turned out. You'll have to let me know in the comments down below if you have ever done a DIY haunted house. I've seen people take the doll houses from Dollar Tree and spray paint them black and add lots of fun additions to them. So maybe that will have to be something that I try for next Halloween. I am a big fan lately of crafting faux sweets. So when I saw some real chocolate covered marshmallows on Instagram, I wanted to DIY them, but using clay marshmallows instead of the real thing. To start off this DIY, we're going to be using these Crayola Model Magic. I got these at Walmart in the children's craft section. They worked really well. I used them last year for my little Halloween spooky cute ghost village. And for one marshmallow, I used almost an entire packet. I had a little bit left over. That I'm going to save. They're the perfect size for smaller marshmallows. I made some smaller marshmallow snowmen last year for Christmas. So I am no stranger to the marshmallow game. Well, the fake marshmallow game. It's really easy. You're just going to grab your chunk of clay roll it kind of into a cylinder shape and then just start flattening out the top and the bottom. It all depends on how you want your marshmallows to look. They could be longer, or skinnier, or shorter, or chunkier. Um, I just went for a medium sized marshmallow and pretty basic, you know, in length and in how wide I wanted it. I let those dry overnight before I moved on to decorating them to make them look like they were actually dipped in chocolate. I took some brown paint, my favorite one, Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel, and covered them entirely in this, again, so it would look like they were covered in chocolate. Next, I wanted to make a dark chocolate drizzle on these, and I didn't have any more of the piping bags from Dollar Tree, so I just went with a Ziploc bag. I made a little hole in it with a thumbtack and then filled it with black paint and then went ahead and just drizzled it on as if I was actually drizzling on some chocolate from a piping bag. Next, I took some sprinkles, started off with some orange, just sugar crystals, and then went in with my darker orange jimmies to decorate these. Last step was adding on my ghost. To do this, you really have to make sure that the faux marshmallows are completely dry from that chocolate drizzle, otherwise everything is going to run together. I went in with a smaller paintbrush and my white paint to make the ghost shapes, added little arms and kind of had them going in a little bit of different directions. And then once the white paint was fully dry, I went in with my dotting tool and some black paint to draw on the mouths and the eyes of our little ghosts. To finish this off, I placed it in one of the Dollar Tree coffins and placed a little bit of spider fabric in there too. I hadn't made a wreath for the Halloween season yet, so using some new supplies and something that I had from last year, I decided to put the two of them together to make this spider web wreath that I think will look great on my front door for the month of October. First off, I had this boo sign. It's a wood cutout that the Dollar Tree sells from last year, so I decided to use it again, but I painted it entirely with black paint. And then for the B and for the exclamation point on the boo, I wanted to add this spiderweb fabric that I got at Dollar Tree. 
I love it. The only bad thing is it's super glittery and the glitter gets absolutely everywhere, which is frustrating, but it's really pretty. So I sucked it up and wanted to use it. So I adhered this down using some Mod Podge. And then I also, once I had everything laid down, put a little bit more Mod Podge over the top of it. And then I left this overnight. I did it later in the night. So I just left it until the next morning when I knew it would be completely dried. I absolutely love the way that it came out when it was dried. I used the glossy Mod Podge, so there was a nice sheen to it. And then with all of the excess fabric, I just grabbed my medium sized scissors and cut all around so that we didn't have any of that excess. The only slightly hard part was getting in the spaces on the B, but I was able to get those out too. So after I had finished all of that, cut off all the excess, I moved on to making the spiders. So the O's are going to be our spider's body. And first up, before I even started on the legs, I started hot gluing down the eyes. I got this big pack of googly eyes from Dollar Tree, so I just hot glued those onto the O's. I wanted to use black pipe cleaners for the spider's legs, but I didn't have any, so I went with red because I thought that kind of went with the, you know, Halloween poison vibe. And I actually love how the red ended up looking since I placed the boo sign on top of the black spider web. And no, I did not paint the back of the boo sign because I'm putting this on my front door and I was scared that the black paint might rub off on my front door. So I left that blank and then I just bended the pipe cleaners kind of like in a V form or I guess an upside down check mark to make the spider's legs and hot glued those on. So I really did like the red, but I wanted a little bit of black. You know, I love distressing pretty much every DIY I do. So I figured I would distress the spider legs too. So to add a little bit of shading, I did add some black on it to the top part of the spider legs. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed another Halloween DIY video. Until next time, keep searching, keep creating.